Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little. I'm here today with episode 312 of Weekly Poker Hand. We are playing 2550 No Limit on Poker Night in America. Here I have Jack Ten of Hearts. I raise it up. I got a lot of playable hands in this game. <laughs> um, so I raised it up to $150 with the Jack Ten of Hearts in the low jack seat. Folds around to Alec Torelli on the button with 10-7 of spades. And I think I'd probably just three better fold this. Um, my raising range is going to have 10-7 of spades in pretty bad shape. So I'm, I'm usually just three betting, but... You know, calling's acceptable, especially if you think the players in the blinds are very loose and very splashy. He does have Jennifer Tilly in the small blind, who is, you know, generally loose and splashy, but it's not like she's just giving it away or anything, right? And then he has Dan Zack in the big blind, who is a very strong GTO player. And for that reason, I don't think I would flat call the 10-7 of spades. I would just three-bet it or fold. And, you know, I was playing a lot of hands this day, so sure, feel free to three-bet me. I wasn't going to fold the Jack-10 of hearts, but... I would have, um, you know, it's a better, probably going to be a better play than just flat calling, I think. We are playing pretty deep stacked at this point. Um, somewhere between, well, me and Torelli were playing 15,000 deep. Dan Zach in the big line has 10,000. Jennifer Tilly has 6,500. So anyway, Torelli calls. Jennifer Tilly calls small blind, but ace jack offsuit, which, again, you can three bet or call. Either play is fine. And then Dan Zach in the big line with ace three of clubs has a pretty easy call, I think. Closing the action. And we see a flop of queen, six, three, two diamonds. So Jennifer Tilly has the ace of diamonds. So she has backdoor flush draw. Dan Zach has bottom pair back backdoor flush draw. I'm sorry. Jennifer Tilly has three to a flush and so not the backdoor draw. Um, Dan Zach has the backdoor draw. I have nothing. And Alec Trelli has nothing. So check, check. I like to check with my nothing on queen, six, three. This is a spot where if I had like any sort of backdoor draw or if I had... Like, say it's queen, six, three, and I have king, jack. I'm probably just going to go ahead and bet. Because this board is very uncoordinated. And the nice thing about it is if I bet and Torelli folds, the most likely hands for Tilly and Zach, assuming Jennifer Tilly is playing a wide-ish range, are going to be, like, middle-to-bottom pair type hands. And a lot of those are going to get way worse on the turn in the river. And with king, jack on queen, six, three, I'm going to be turning some backdoor equity a lot of the time, which is going to let me keep bluffing. But with just two undercards, I'm just going to give up. And I'd recommend the same thing for Torelli. He has 10-7 of spades, but it checks around to him, and he pretty quickly fires out, it looks like, $300 into the $600 pot. And I'm not a big fan of this. I think that with two undercards, no backdoor draw whatsoever into three opponents, you have to be very careful, especially when the two opponents you're betting into are in the blinds because they essentially have not acted when they check the flop, right? Like if Jennifer Tilly or Dan Zach had a queen... On queen 6-3, they're just always going to check. If they had a set, they're always going to check. If they had a draw, they're always going to check. Or at least the vast majority of the time. So you're essentially betting into two players whose ranges are very acceptable. Now, I get the idea that Alec Trelli does have lots of decent queens in his range, right? Like he may not three-bet ace, queen, king, queen, queen, jack, pocket sixes, pocket threes. He has all the nut hands available, but he just has literally no hand this time. And with your absolute worst hands, I think you just need to be giving up. Unless you have some read that the players in the blinds are just done with it. And um, we know Jennifer Tilly doesn't like to fold all that often. And Dan Zach doesn't seem to give away a ton of tells. So we have two players who could have very reasonable ranges still just sitting there. Whenever I check the flop four ways, yeah, I agree. I'm probably not going to stick around all that often. But you still have those two other players to worry about. So in this spot, kind of like I would only be betting with my decent backdoor draws. I think Torelli should be betting with mostly his decent backdoor draws. All right, so around to Tilly, she has to call 300 into a pot that will be um, 900 after Trelly's bet with Ace of Diamonds, Jack. I think sticking around is probably okay. Folding's also fine. The problem is, is that you have to worry about Dan Zach raising you every once in a while, which isn't going to happen a ton, but may. And also, if you do turn an Ace or River an Ace, it may not be good. And as we see in this instance, it's actually not because Dan Zach has Ace 3, right? And if you get a jack and someone keeps betting, it's not like you're thrilled about it because you now have second pair. So I think you probably just want to fold. If she had a better position, like say she was in the big blind instead of Dan Zach and Dan Zach was in the small blind, then I would be way more inclined to call because like I said, I'm probably done with the hand whenever I check the flop the majority of the time. Or at least I don't have a very strong hand. But the problem is that Dan Zach could just easily be sitting here with a hand that's, that has ace-jack in pretty bad shape. And if you do get four diamonds on the board, it's not like you're going to get paid off all that often because, well, <laughs> it's very obvious someone could just have the ace, right? So this is a spot where I think she probably just needs to fold. 
But she does call. And then Dan Zach now putting in 300 into a total pot of 1500 has an easy call with the bottom pair and back door draw. He could raise every once in a while, I guess. I obviously fold. I have nothing. Now we see a turn, which is the nine of clubs. So now Dan Zach turns the back door flush draw. Torelli still has nothing. Jennifer Tilly checks. Dan Zach checks. This is a spot where they should both be checking very frequently, I think. And now does Torelli keep bluffing? I mean... I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't have bet the flop in the first place. If I did bet the flop with Jack 10 and turn to 9, I would definitely bluff. The times you want to continue bluffing are when you turn additional equity. And the problem with 10-7 of spades on queen 6-3 is you just can't turn additional equity, right? You will always have no draw and undercards on the turn. All right, so River is now the Jack... I'm sorry, the 10 of diamonds. So Torelli actually River's the best hand. And Jennifer Tilly has the nut flush blocker and the straight blocker with the ace of diamonds and jack on queen six three nine ten. Ten of diamonds on the river completing the flush. So should Jennifer Tilly bluff? I think the answer is absolutely yes. Because when it checks you on the turn, the only person who's likely to have a queen is Dan Zach. You have to think Torelli's going to keep betting his queens on the turn. So if Dan Zach did have a queen, he's going to have two pairs sometimes. But even then, two pairs is not loving it if... Jennifer Tilly blasts the river. So the pot's 1,500. I would go quite big here, like 1,500, maybe even 2,500, like a sizable bet. This is a spot where she wants to be very polarized. She's going to be betting here with flushes and bluffs. And remember, in order to have a bluff at this point, she has to have check called the flop with, well, a hand that doesn't have two diamonds, that uh, doesn't have a queen, it's kind of hard to find too many bluffs here besides exactly 5-4, right? And 5-4 actually has to be kind of careful bluffing because it doesn't have relevant blockers to the nuts. So it's kind of it's actually kind of hard for, to come up with too many bluffs for Jennifer Tilly here, right? Especially betting into two opponents who could just easily have rivered some sort of a pair. So I do think this is a nice spot for Jennifer Tilly to go for a bet. And I would be betting pretty big because whenever you're in this spot, you always have to ask, what am I trying to get to fold? And at this point, we're trying to get a hand like a queen or an under pair to fold. And to get those hands to fold, you're going to need to bet relatively big. What a lot of people do wrong in this spot is they'll bet 600 into the $1,500 pot. And then if someone just happens to randomly have a 10 or a 9, they're just going to call you. I mean, you lose, right? So in spots like this, when you are bluffing, you're probably going to want to use a pretty big size. So if she does bet, Danzak just has a fold. Jennifer Tilly does go kind of small. She bets, well, she did go 700. I think this is too small. Now around to Alec Torelli. I think if Jennifer Tilly bet just a little bit bigger, she would have gotten a pretty easy fold from Torelli. Now facing a 700 bet, I actually think it's close. Uh, Torelli rivered the 10. So queen, six, three, nine, 10. He rivered the 10. Torelli likes to think for a while. I'm sure he's going through this thought process that I just went through of like, what do you really beat here? <laughs> this bet sure does look value heavy, right? Um, that said, you have to realize Jennifer Tilly's getting in there and mixing it up. She's not just going to always bet small with her good hands and always bet big with her bluffs or anything like that. So get that out of your head immediately. If you're thinking, oh, people always bet small when they're bluffing or the opposite, realize that you know, we're playing relatively high-level poker here and people are going to be at least somewhat balanced. Not, I'm not saying 100% balanced, but as we see here, if, if you slotted me into Alec Tarly's shoes, I would automatically be thinking, oh, she's trying to get called. Well, if she's trying to get called, then it tends no good. That's kind of like first level poker thinking, but we're not playing first level poker here. And for that reason, I think as nasty as this is, this may just be a call. Feels like you're giving it away when you call here though. <laughs> it really does. I mean, maybe I'm being results oriented here. I know that I'm a bit of a calling station. <laughs> so I, I recognize that I call in these scenarios a little bit too often. I also realize we are about three and a half hours into a 16-hour uh, session. I think we played eight hours each day. And getting information immediately as to what, what Jennifer Tilly is doing in these spots I think is highly valuable, given we have to play another 12 hours of poker. So I think in this spot, I would have found a very reluctant call just because you do beat random backdoor draws, some of them, like ace, four of clubs, right, that may check call flop. You beat 5-4, you beat 7-5. You lose a whole lot, like a whole lot. And I do think you're going to be shown a queen there a lot or a flush, but I do think it's probably acceptable to make the call. It's loose. Don't get me wrong. It's loose. And that the call kind of presumes Jennifer Tilly's over bluffing or being a little bit too splashy, but it's like clear she's playing a lot of pots, right? So if someone's playing a lot of pots, 
very often they will just end up on the river with slightly too wide of ranges. And if the ranges are a little bit too wide on the river and they know how to bluff using all sorts of various sizings, then just got to become a calling station, <laughs> which is why I end up being a calling station against players who like to play a lot of hands. So that's going to be it for this episode of Weekly Poker Hand. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you're watching this on YouTube, click like, click subscribe. That goes a long way to helping me there. If you're listening on iTunes or Spotify or wherever, leave a review. That also goes a long way to helping me. Good luck in your games. Have fun. And I'll talk to you next week.